Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you very much for joining me again today. On today's episode, we're looking at Topaz Studio 2 again. As I told you in the past, we're going over each and every filter inside of Studio 2. Today, we're going to look at the Curves filter. So let's come up here to Add Filter, give that a click, and come down to Curves and click on Curves. So there's our Curves filter right here. Now, the Curves filter or Curves adjustment is a very powerful adjustment in just about any piece of software or every piece of software that uses Curves. It's powerful and it works the same whether you have Photoshop, Lightroom, Luminar, Topaz, On1. The Curves are the same in all these. So if you learn the Curves here, you'll learn the Curves in any of the other pieces of software. So today we're looking at curves. It's a very powerful adjustment. You can do many things with curves. You can color correct images with curves. You can add special effects with curves. You can adjust your contrast. You can do a myriad of things. So let's get started here with the curves adjustment and see how it works. As in all Topaz filters, we have the opacity slider and we've gone over these things before. We have the uh, blending modes here. We have the presets and if I click this drop down here you can see all the different presets in here we may look at those later but for now I'm going to show you how curves works and we're not going to bother with those right now here we can use this icon and click it and save a preset if we get a nice preset that we've designed ourselves we can save it as a preset and we have the trash can where we can get rid of this filter if we don't want to use it okay so let's get started all right let's take a look at the curves adjustment here's the curves adjustment right here you notice this line right here dissecting this square right here this is where we make all the adjustments and we can drop different points on this line here. For instance, let me just show you here. I can click, left click my mouse right here in the center and put a little dot there. And then I can move this dot up. Notice how the image gets lighter. I can move the dot down, the image gets darker. I can take, I can click on this dot and drag it to the right and get rid of it. That's how you get rid of dots. But I could put a bunch of dots in here. Watch, I can put a dot here, click a dot here, 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 here. And then I can take these dots and I can move them up, I can move them down, I can make my picture look really crazy. And like that, you know, psychedelic. So you can imagine, you can make crazy looking adjustments, very artistic looking adjustments. This Curves uh, filter is really amazing, but we're going to tap into all the different things you can do with it here. But let's, let's just look at the basics first. Let's go ahead and reset the curves adjustment. So all we need to do, see where it says curves here? Click on this little icon right here and that'll reset it. Let's zoom in on this curves adjustment right here. And as we do, notice at the bottom here, you see this line that goes across here? It's a gra it's, you can see this graduated line across here. It's black over here and it gets lighter and lighter till it gets to white. And this line on the left hand side right here, you notice it's black and it gets lighter and lighter as it goes up. Well, that's really valuable information for you. So basically what this is saying is if I were to take a point, let's put a point dead center, which would be our midtones of our image. And I were to pull up on this line, I would make my midtones lighter, right? Because you can see it goes from dark to light. Light, things get lighter as we pull up. As we pull down from this point, things would start to darken. So let's pull up. So basically what I'm doing is I'm making my midtones lighter. If I pull down, I'm making my midtones darker. I pull it back right to the center. So right, so basically what I've done there is I've remapped my midtones. So I've, I've told my midtones, become this value midtones lighter or become this value darker. Or if I don't want them to change, I could lock it right here in the center. Notice these lines right here on this curves adjustment. See this line right here, this line right here, this line right here. This line represents the quarter tones of the image or the darker tones of the image. This line right in the center would be your mid tones of the image. This line to the right of that would be the three quarter tones or the lighter tones of the image. One of the many things that curves are great for is adding contrast to your image. And let me show you what I mean here. Now bear in mind what I just told you about the quarter tones, the mid tones, and the three quarter tones. What if I were to take these three quarter tones, this point right here, give that a left click, put a point right there, and drag up a little bit, making that three quarter tone a little bit lighter. And now if I come down to this quarter tone point right here, give it a left click of my mouse and pull straight down in it just a little bit, making that uh, quarter tone a little darker. 
I've basically added more contrast to my image. So let's come up here to this eyeball and let's give it a click. So there's the before and there's the after. You see how I've added contrast to my image. Curves are great for adding contrast to your image. I want to point out something right now. Notice when I click this eyeball and shut this adjustment off. You notice the color becomes less saturated. And now when I click this adjustment back on, the color becomes more saturated. Whenever you add contrast to an image, be it through curves, be it through a contrast adjustment, you will naturally get a saturation boost to your image. If you don't want that boost to happen, all you need to do, let's click on curves right here. See right here where the blend modes are? Right now it's in normal. All you need to do is go down here to luminosity and give that a click and that saturation bump or boost upward will disappear. I just wanted to throw that in. That's a little extra bonus. As you can see here, curves are great for making contrast adjustments on your images, but curves can be used for many different things. In this video, I'm not going to be able to cover every different thing that you can do with curves, but the possibilities are almost limitless. Well, there you've just learned how to use uh, curves to add a contrast adjustment to your image. Now let's go ahead and reset that curve and I'll show you some other things we can do. So let's come to curves here and click the little reset icon to reset it. If we needed to add just a little bit of mid-tone brightness to our image, we could come to the curve right in the center, click and drag up, add a little bit of brightness to the image. Or if we want to darken the image a little bit in the mid-tones, we can just pull it down and darken it up a little bit. So that's really cool. Let's come back to the center. We could also use the curves adjustment to dodge or burn our image. And let me show you how to do that. Let's start with dodging. What you need to do is take this dot right here, the center point, and drag up on it to wherever you want. You can always come back here and readjust this, but let's just take it right up to about here for now. All right, the next thing you need to do is come up to the layer mask right here and give that a click. And you'll notice the layer mask is white, meaning it's revealing that lightning adjustment. All you need to do is click these three dots here and invert that. Inverting the layer mask hides the adjustment. And you notice we have this black mask here. So the next thing we need to do is get a brush, give it a click, and then adjust the radius of the brush, how big you want the brush to be. Now remember, we're dodging now. So the next thing we need to do is come here where it says transparency and drag the slider to the right. And you'll notice when it's to the left, this is area is black. And if I painted black on black, nothing would happen, right? So let's move it to the right. Let's get some kind of a gray tone in here. I want you to really see this adjustment. So I'm going to pull it up pretty, pretty much to the right here. So we have this lighter gray tone right here. So I'm going to be painting through this mask right here basically shooting a hole through that mask and it'll let that light adjustment come through. What if I wanted to lighten this area of the flower up right here? So let me just click and drag over this area right here. Now let's take this opacity slider and drag it to the left and drag it to the right. See how it lightened that up? That's called dodging folks. Now to burn what we need to do is come up to add filter and grab ourselves another curves adjustment layer. And this time well, let's go to the center of the curve here and drag down to burn right around there. All right, and the same thing we did last time with dodging. We have to come up to the layer mask, give that a click. We have a white reveal all layer mask here. We need to invert it, so let's come here and invert it. And then what we need to do is click on brush and let's adjust our transparency. And let's adjust our radius to the right radius that we need. All righty. And usually my softness is usually right around the center. And let's come here to an area I want to darken. What if I want to darken, uh, let's say like this petal right in here. So I can just come and paint over that. And maybe over here on the edge and right over here. Now let's take this opacity slider, drag it to the left and drag it to the right. And see, there we've burned. As I've told you before in other videos, dodging and burning is such a powerful effect to really add a lot of emphasis and artistic quality to your image. So dodging and burning is awesome. And then here's another thing we can do. After we've made our adjustment, we can come back here and click where it says curves. Give that a click so we can see our curve again. Now watch the dark area. See, I can pull this curve up or down, make those areas lighter or darker. So we can come after, come after the fact that we've already made the adjustment on the layer mask and then we can come and retweak this to the right level of burning that we want or dodging depending what we're doing. 
Okay, so maybe right around there. Let's take a look at some more things we can do with curves. So let's come up here to add filter, give it a click and click on curves again. We'll add our third curve. This time I'm going to show you what these little icons are for. The red, green, and blue icon, the red icon, the green icon, and the blue icon. Now curves, not only can you adjust tonal values, uh, make contrast adjustments, or uh, do dodging and burning, and those type of things, but you can also do color type things to your image. For instance, you could color grade your image, give it that cinematic look, or you could color balance your image. Let me show you how this is done. This first icon right here, deals with the RGB tone tonality curve, okay? And that's the one we were adjusting where it encompasses all three color channels. There's a red, a green, and a blue color channel in a digital image, okay? And those red, green, and blue channels make up all the colors of your image. Now, this first icon deals with the luminosity values of the image or the, you know, the light and darkness of the image. These other icons, red, green, and blue, deal with the colors of the image, red, green, and blue or the three channels of your digital image, the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. Let's start off taking a look at the red channel. Now, this is very interesting, and this is very important to note. The red channel, the opposite of red is always going to be cyan. So get that in your head, red opposite is cyan. Green, the green channel, the opposite of the green in your image is magenta, so remember, green opposite is magenta and then blue or the blue channel the opposite of the blue is yellow so the opposite of blue is always going to be yellow and it's very important that you get that cemented into your head try to memorize that rgb red green blue cmy cyan magenta and yellow so the opposite of red is cyan the opposite of green is magenta and the opposite of blue is yellow it would really pay to memorize that that'll really help you when you're making adjustments using curves or a lot of different adjustments in topaz or photoshop or any software programs let's look at this red channel so let me click on the red icon here and you notice my white line turned to this red line so if I come to the center here and give it a click and pull up, I'll make my image more red. So I'm increasing red in this image. If I pull down to the, to the original line right here and then keep continuing to go down, down, I will be adding cyan to the image because the opposite of red is cyan. Okay. So let's find a spot that we'd like. I'm going to say right about there and, and, my eye says this looks pretty nice so now let's go to green if i pull up here i'm going to add green to the image and i think oh that doesn't look good my eye does not like that that looks sick so let me start to pull down away from green i'll be adding less green and once i cross this line right here i'll be adding magenta to the green so let's find a spot that i like i don't want to add too much magenta but maybe right about there now let's go to blue, and if I pull up, I'll add a little bit of blue, or I can add a lot of blue if I pull straight up the whole way to the top. But let me come down and add a little bit of yellow. So remember, the opposite of blue is yellow, so I can add a little bit of yellow to the image, and maybe say like right about there. So I'm thinking, that looks pretty good. So let's come to this eyeball right here and see a before and an after. So before and after. So on the before, it looks a little more red, and if I go after, it looks a little warmer, a little more inviting. So I basically just color graded my image just with curves. That is a pretty cool thing. Well, today you learned how to make contrast adjustments. You learned how to dodge and burn with curves. And you also learned how to color grade your image with curves. And also use the same effect to color balance out an image. Like say if your image is a little too green or a little too magenta, to get rid of magenta, you would just go to curves and go on the green channel and pull up on green and that would take magenta away. So the possibilities with curves are pretty much endless, like I said earlier. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I really appreciate it. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please do so and hit that bell notification icon so you can be informed of all the new training videos I'm putting out. And also, if you like this video, please give it a like. It really encourages me. And also share it with your friends. Well, guys, thank you very much for joining me on The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you right here next time.